Hey everyone, Shark here. Welcome back to the channel. Got a 1v1 for you today on the map Toronto Coastline. The map that I'm really enjoying playing and casting because of its unique layout compared to some of the other 1v1 maps. Playing as the Axis, we have Barrow Downs running the DAC, rank number 11. And playing as the Allies, we have Nub as the Americans, rank number 14. Really like kind of the balance play you see here. It's a DAC build in 1v1 that doesn't involve Bersalieri, and he really takes it to Nub, who then immediately gives it back to him. So that's it. Hope you enjoy. All right. So in the top right corner here, I guess this is technically the uh, southeast in blue. We've got Barrow Downs playing DAC. Starting immediately with a crowd shoots and as his Panzer Pioneers move out to this high munitions point. And then opposite him in red is Nub. Uh, who's grabbing an engineer and then locking in a barracks here uh, and then getting a, a rifle out so barrow downs going for a panzer grenadier honestly this is a this is a pretty standard start sometimes you see uh the panzer grenadier before the crowd shoots him but i think in this case it makes sense to go crowd first this map is really interesting uh i i enjoy playing it most of the time but the fact that the you know uh, the players start opposite each other in like two corners of the map versus in the center it leads to some like wonky engagements retreat paths and uh, opportunities for flanks so uh hopefully we see all of that and more in this game uh it looks like the crowd shoots is going to pick up these fuels here along the eastern edge panzer grenadier is moving out into the center uh panzer pioneer is capping up this this fuel here it's funny it's only plus five but i feel like it being the one resource that does isn't like defaulted to one side or the other. Uh, it's normally a place where you see engagements early. In fact, I like I see a lot of guys throw mines uh, on approach as they cap. Uh, 250 coming out now for Barrow Downs. Uh, I think that makes sense on this map. When you, you're going to bleed a little bit less manpower to the Americans, but then also you can just move around a little faster. Meanwhile, Nub has locked in the Special Operations Battle Group. Uh, something that I've enjoyed playing with a little bit more recently. Um, and now his, uh, he's getting a second squad of rifles out while his engineers and, and scouts kind of cap up. Alright, pioneers go into the, uh, the 250. Um, I, I kind of like where the bike's at right now. I like that the inability to reverse means you have to be a little bit more careful with it, but, um... It provides that combat, a combined arms combat bonus, which uh, in 1v1s makes it really valuable early. Even though the rifles are bleeding it down fairly well. Here we go. Nice little combined fight. Yeah, riflemen wisely retreat. There's scouts on the flank. Uh, and they're going to hop in this building. They may do quite a bit of damage to this bike, but it's going to get out of there. Alright, so it looks like Barrow Down is going to grab control of kind of the north side of the map here. Yeah, this is an interesting engagement. Like an exercise in futility. So Nub uh, has now committed to the weasel. So he no pack howitzer for him. Oh, the flamer pops and the scouts have to hop out. And now they're in kind of a rough spot. They got to try to figure out how to retreat without getting run down. There we go. He makes his play when the pioneers hop in the building. The 250 is going to continue to pursue. Panzer Grenadier is also on their retreat path. Oh man, these scouts, this might be it here. Yeah, just too much damage. Scouts gunned down. So that's one of the things that's relatively unique about this map. You see those kinds of uh, chase downs quite a bit. Weasel moves up now to support rifles over here. Meanwhile, the bike has captured up uh, Nub's fuel in the south. So good start for the DAC. Pick up on the scouts. Nub's reaction is to tech grenades. But with only two rifles on the field against two Panzer Grenadier squads uh, in this half track, the rifles are not going to fare well early. Yeah. And they retreat to avoid bleeding too much. Um, and now Nub's going to almost need medical very soon. Looks like the weasel's going to try to kite a little bit, but he's got to be careful because that 250 would be able to just run it down. No, but Lee's gonna gain control of his fuel again. This big mobile DAC force here in the center. And I guess Barrow Downs is like 
pretty happy with where he's at right now from a composition perspective. We're going to see him start to tech. Uh, he's got great fuel control, so he can almost immediately go for the fire support elements. And he's actually going to be able to deny... No, I guess he's not. So Nub's going to be able to get control back of his fuel. The half-track not wanting to close too much, risking getting sticky bombed. Now here come the rifles out. This time on Barrow Down's flank. There we go. The weasel gets vet one. These pins are going to deers. Yeah, they're forced to retreat now. And now they could potentially get run down. They're really low on health. The rifles are going to follow. One model left. Oh, man. But that squad's going to get away. Well, the weasel's going to continue to chase. Second squad forced to retreat. I don't know if the weasel's going to pick it up. And now the weasel might get caught out. By the... And so now the weasel is just going to sell out to get this Panzer Grenadier. Which he will do. Uh, only to immediately get annihilated by the bike in the 251. Or 250. Meanwhile though, Nub making great use of that distracting engagement to start capping up portions of the map. Engineer is able to stand on this munitions point. In the meantime though, you see Barrow Downs going hard into tier 2 with the fire support elements. And selecting the armored support battle group and and the salvage here so he's gonna be able to get some manpower back from this weasel and flak filling on the field now nub has changed his mind he he had isc selected but now he's going for healing and it looks like he's going to go for the mechanized support center the crotch is in here is achieved vet one so now that's going to be an absolute menace and barrow down's going for the assault grenadier mechanized group this is... I, I really like this for spreading out the map and capping. The Assault Grenadiers will scale fairly well as long as they don't get uh, pinned down on that, that far retreat path. Meanwhile, Nub, he's floating a little bit of resources here. Um, but really needs a little bit more... His unit composition is just not very extensive at the moment. And you see that now you're going to see Barrow Down start to spread out and grab up the north side of the map. Um, put some pressure on from a VP perspective. <clears throat> Panzer Pioneers available. Our equipment, men. Another squad of Panzer Pioneers out. So, uh, that's interesting to me. Nub going for the motor pool here. So, I I think we're probably just going to see anti-tank guns. But I, I really don't know where he's going to go with this and how it's going to work with the Special Operations Battle Group. The Riflemen find this flak for Ling. And I like that. So, allows the first burst to suppress, then moves up while the unit's still suppressed to do some additional damage. Meanwhile, on the flank, Assault Grenadiers disembark. Push in. And then they're going to actually move back to get in some green cover as the Riflemen move up. Meanwhile, we're getting a pinch here. The flak for laying Panzer Grenadiers, and now the half track with the flame pile. There's the suppression. Rifleman take an awkward retreat path. The 250 is not going to pursue. Rifles here using port on them, but not doing a whole lot of damage to these assault grenadiers in cover. And again, pain potentially painful retreat path here for this rifle squad. Meanwhile, the second squad of Panzer Pioneers just capping up the southern side. So, I this makes sense now. He got the second squad. Ooh. Oh, this is all Grenadier is taking quite a bit of damage. Nice timing on the grenade from Nub. But yeah, the rifle squad also forced to depart. He doesn't want him to bleed too much. Now, Nub answers my question about army composition. He's going for the Greyhound. Which is now getting the 50 cal first and then the armored skirts. You know... Uh, previous, prior to this patch, you would often see the Greyhound do the skirts first for the survivability, but now that so much of the damage comes from that top-mounted 50 cal, it makes sense that for, uh, for Nub to prioritize the turret gun. Now he's going to spread out with his rifles and try to take, uh, take, retake the south side of the map here. Flag for Ling relocated. It was on prioritized vehicles, ironically. Now pack 38 on the field for Barrow Downs. So 
He's got developing a really nice combined arms unit composition here, and he's got outstanding fuel control starting to mine up. One rifle squad finds a mine. I really like this uh, setup Barrow Downs here has, where he's basically building a pocket around the fuel point. Oh, there's the sticky under the Greyhound. Not under any immediate danger, but could end up uh, if it hits a mine. Oh, and there's... Looks like those are the canister rounds. So early rearm and refit for Nub. Blackfilling pushes away this rifle squad. Pack 38 moving up. First shot hits the Greyhound. If it takes the wrong retreat path, it could go down here. Now, Barrow Downs really extended deep into the uh, northwest corner of the map here. That could be risky, but in all honesty, he doesn't have a ton of infantry to get cut down on retreat. The vehicles are far more mobile, and now with his uh, med truck moved up, he can afford to, to stay on the field, maintain some field presence. And now he's going to tech for tier 4. Interestingly enough, he went for the penetration bonus on his vehicle, so that will allow the flak for lane to tangle with the Greyhound a little bit, a little bit more deliberately. Uh, but I think with all these half-tracks on the field and the bike and the potential for P3s, he might have gotten more value out of the superior fire drills, which provides a bonus to hull and coaxial machine guns. Riflemen advancing on these assault grenadiers. Trying to force them off this VP here. So, Nub doing a good job of playing where his opponent is not. The Rifleman just kiting these assault grenadiers at range. That's the big difference between the Assault Grenadiers and the Wehrmacht Grenadiers with the MP40 upgrade, is these are all five MP40s. And so they really don't do much damage at range at all. I think what I was saying earlier, I like that Barrow Downs recognized the need to get a Minesweeper out, and that's why he got the second Panzer Pioneer squad, since he'd already invested into the Flamer with the first one. Oh, good shot from the M1 AT gun to push the flak lane back. And Barrow Down's full kind of vehicle fleet forced to back up, and now it looks like Nub is going to swing north here to try to regain these resources. P3 is on the way. Oh, this Greyhound with the can rounds. Another couple good shots. Rifleman advancing to try to catch... Oh, the bike knocked out the combination of the AT gun and some BARs. Panzer Pioneers go down as well. The Greyhound forced to back up in, uh, from the Pack 38. And so Nub will take the uh, the short victory there and then back up before he overextends. BARs on the rifles are going to allow them to scale a little bit better against these assault grenadiers. And now he's just finding all the mines planted here while these panzer grenadiers start to tear through the engineers. Only one squad of panzer grenadiers, but they scale very well, uh, especially with that LMG and the veterancy. Oh, the Greyhound, fortunately... Doesn't have to worry about a, a, a anti-tank grenade. I think that's the difference, right? Is on this map, if you're far advanced, you almost have to retreat way earlier than you normally would to avoid getting cut off uh, and knocked down on retreat. So seeing the impact of the uh, the map on the gameplay, whereas normally I think you could afford to try to advance with your Panzer Grenadiers on that Greyhound and try to knock it out with an eye tank grenade. Ooh. Rifle squad finds a mine here. I think he probably... It, that had been seen by this engineer squad, but they're just uh, limited in their ability to move around. And at this point, honestly, Nub's so short on fuel compared to Barrow Downs, I understand the uh, desire to grab that fuel point at all costs. So it looks like we've already seen the emergency repair kits go out for Barrow Down. So he's just able to invest quite a bit into the quality of these vehicles. It's also an extra 80 HP. So between that and the vehicle survivability kits, more or less an extra anti-tank gun shot. Not quite. It's 120 and most AT guns do 160 damage. 
We've also seen uh, Panzer Storm unlocked. Uh, similar to the other Blitz abilities, but the big difference being it allows you to ignore engine crits. Which uh, might be a little goofy, but it's an ability. Oh, and and Barrow Down's recognizing. Yeah, he's had a fuel advantage, so he's going to unlock Armored Reserves. Doesn't necessarily mean a Tiger right away. Sometimes the Panzer IV with all these upgrades can be really, really deadly as well. Nub, meanwhile, using the lull in the action to cap up the north side of the map. And here we go. Panzer III moving up to find these rifles. Two AT guns in the rear here. One shot comes in, the second whiffs. So the Panzer III forced to back out. Rifles find this Panzer Pioneer squad, force them to retreat. The flak filling's in position to support. It almost feels like Barrow Downs isn't certain how to proceed here. He's kind of backed up. He's got his two half cracks sitting outside his base. Uh, Assault Kinnadir is moving out. But he's essentially just allowing Nub to, to advance. Maybe this is part of some grand strategy where he then cuts off the retreat path. But allowing Nub to cut down the resource advantage significantly. Now, Nub going for a third AT gun with some of his spare manpower. Oh, Bali comes in on the P3, which then uses the sight blocker. The Soul Crater Theorist forced away that, uh, that engineer. But they, if they try to tangle with these rifles, they're just going to end up bleeding a bunch of models. Here's a flak for lane to try to support the fuel, or prevent the fuel capture. Yeah, so that rifle squad forced away. Black Furling can chase a little bit before coming in to help the Assault Grenadiers with this engagement. Yeah, the AoE suppression, making sure these rifles are suppressing the green cover. Assault Grenadiers close the distance and force away the rifles. Nub wisely retreats his AT guns. As his other rifle squads transition to the opposite side of the map, force Panzer Grenadiers off of that central VP. He won't achieve the triple cap though because the Assault Grenadiers are going to counter cap in the northeast. There it is. So Panzer IV with the Salt Grenadier is out now. <clears throat> now, the the Panzer III, the Panzer IV are good multi-role vehicles, but they're uh, even with all the upgrades, just not as durable as some of the options available to like the Wehrmacht with the Brumbear or the US with the Bulldozer. And so the this nest of AT guns over here will actually hold these tanks uh, at risk a little bit if they advance too rapidly. He's only seen two of them. If Nub's able to uh, to combine snares with these well-placed AT guns, uh, he could impose some pretty significant costs here on Barrow Downs. And actually, Nub now building a munitions cache on uh, this plus 16 point. Ooh. Pack 38 in the back forces the Greyhound away. And when AT guns move up, only one of two rounds hits the flak filling, so it backs away. And these AT guns now need to be concerned about the DAC infantry approaching. Two squads of assault grenadiers on the field, which need veterancy to really scale at this point. But this Panzer Grenadier squad can hold that AT gun at risk from range. Yeah, two rifles over here force away the assault grenadier. And then on the short axis, rifles and Panzer Grenadier sparring in green cover. Cool. One rifle squad suppressed. Assault Grenadiers close to force it away. And, oh, so that's... Yeah, the Greyhound just being repaired in the rear. Yeah, P3 and P4 are going to try to push away these rifle squads. So rifle squads forced off. This engagement just kind of still taking place over here. Both sides more or less content to just hold. Couple AT guns moved onto the flank. So it looks like they're gonna go hunting for those tanks. Finally, the Panzer Grenadier is forced off. Ooh, big Savo comes in on the Panzer III. 
But that's going to be it from this AT, these AT guns for now. And they're going to back up to the center. So interesting use of the fuel cache here. No, clearly floating a little bit of manpower. He's had... Uh, oh, Black Flame takes a hit. If you look at the KD, it's not that he's necessarily had a bunch of engagements go his way. But he's clearly not feeling the manpower pressure the way that Barrow Downs is with all the upgrades. And so I think what you're likely to see is a combination of the anti-infantry loiter potentially with the uh, assault flares, or the raiding flares. Here we go. Rifles closed with the assault grenade of the ears. The smoke grenade goes out, but that won't really help them. Assault grenade is forced off. I really, I was kind of hoping Barrow Downs would do something with these two half tracks back here, other than make sure his Panzer Grenadiers get a combat arms bonus, or combined arms bonus. Um, he's got 337 munitions. He could easily just convert them into mortar half tracks, put some additional pressure on this, these U.S. infantry and U.S. team weapons. Yeah, a couple mortar half tracks would be terrible for those AT guns to try to deal with. Cool. But nope, the flak filling is going to get out before it gets knocked out by the AT gun. P3 and P4 now moving back in. But here we've got Nub with two AT guns, a Greyhound, and a rifle squad. And they're rotating back over. Both sides trying to shorten their lines. Oh, Salt Grenadiers standing right on these riflemen. Oh no, and they get annihilated. Nice shot through the hedge. These tanks continue to deal a ton of damage. So I'm going to just pick up a BAR. Meanwhile, one half track about to go down here to a rifle squad on the opposite side. Black Filling moves up to try to suppress. Oh man, and it saves the half track. Now, Assault Grenadier is challenged by the Greyhound with canister rounds. And in the center, Assault Grenadier is tangling with uh, BAR rifles. Yeah, just the lack of health there forces the, uh, the Assault Grenadiers away. Ooh. Really hard shot from the P3. It takes out a couple of riflemen. Nub capping the Northeast VP, content to let this one be uh, unowned for now. He's finally going for his tank depot, and he's got enough additional fuel to immediately get a tank out. I didn't see the 76 mil upgrade for the Sherman pop, but it's possible he already did that. Oh, this AT gun's done. Panzer Grenadiers catch it out of position. And actually, no, rifles arrived just in time. But here come the P3 and the P4. Good damage on the first volley. Man, with the repair kits, these vehicles for the DAC just always ready for their engagements. Engineer is unable to capture the, uh, the light fuel point there. Greyhound now going to close. Oh my goodness. Panzer Pioneers, one more shot. Oh, they're done. Annihilated, but the Greyhound may pay for it. Yeah. Greyhound smoke. Rifles could also take a bunch of damage on retreat if the Panzers choose to pursue. I think Barrow Down's very concerned. He knows those AT guns are in the middle. And so it looks like he's content uh, to try to take over these v these resource points and VPs. Clearly rapid advance activated. Oh, here we go. Here's a snare onto the 250 over here. Plus pour it on him. So this thing is done. The BAR is going to tear through it. Riflemen suppressed by the flak filling. More riflemen moving up. Good micro to consistently suppress the rifles. It looks like we're going to see an M4A1 Sherman. From Nub is his first tank. I think. Oh, nice shot. Good positioning. Panzer Grenadier. Putting pressure on that AT gun. Rifles here will. I think they're in a good position to do well against these Panzer Grenadiers, even with the veterancy ability. But this flak filling can move up and shape this engagement. 
Yep, they're suppressed, and now the Panzer Grenadiers will win. Barrow Down's now in a position to challenge for uh, Nup's primary fuel again. And Barrow Down's with enough fuel for a Tiger at this point. Just about a minute's worth of manpower away. I think he's starting to approach critical mass. If he, a Tiger, in addition to the P3 and P4, uh, we put him in a really good spot to, to end this game. Oh man, Rifle Squad at serious in danger, but even the BAR can't pick it up on retreat. Oh, and now the Sherman, targeted by the uh, anti-tank loiter, takes a ton of damage from the first pass. And the P3 and the P4 are able to knock it out immediately. So good combined play there from uh, Barrow Downs. Oh, here are the new Assault Grenadier grenades. But he retreats in time. Three AT guns move up, but only one takes a shot. Flak feeling able to back up. Assault Grenades challenging the uh, rifles here. Oh man, and depending on their oh, bat, poor retreat path, so Assault Gren's going to chase. But Rifleman able to clear the danger area. So Nub now in kind of a rough spot. He's got enough fuel for another tank. I think with this, with the three AT guns, and what Barrowdown's currently has on the field, I'd almost think that a, uh, a Bulldozer Sherman might be better to help clear some of the infantry for him and then rely on the AT guns to deal with the tanks. Oh, grenades on the retreat path, just a little ahead of schedule. Really like the play there. And now Barrow Down's about to get the triple cap on here. Oh, and here's E3 and P4 moving up. His rifleman, man, that's a durable tractor, but it's not going to be enough to keep them from just getting chunked down. Now the tractor finally destroyed. Rifleman forced back. Ooh, big volley comes in from the AT guns. But a couple rounds bounce, so the P3 able to back up. And now Barrow Down's going to maintain control of her Nub's fuel. Nub getting another M4A1 out. Oh, and then a Tiger hits the field. So at this point, I feel like army composition still is very much in Barrow Down's favor, especially with this uh, vehicle's ability to cap points. Nub is just on the drain here with the triple cap. And really going to struggle to deal, especially because... Uh, Baradons can just park his vehicles on the VPs. We're going to see one last push over here on the flank. Rifleman moving up, supported by three AT guns. Oh, the instant suppression from the flak filling might be enough to, uh... So the Assault Grenadier is going to be able to stand on this VP. Here are the AT guns. Volley comes in, but only one round hits the flak filling, so it's able to back up. Assault Grenadiers will hold. And it looks like Bear Downs is going to be content to hold this central VP with the Tiger, the P3, and the P4. Oh, the rifle squad. It'll get away, but it doesn't matter at this point. Nub finally forces off the Sussulkin of the Air Squad. He, he could chase with the Sherman here. And now he's rushing to get engineers onto that far VP. He's got the Special Operations Commander. He could uh, trigger the assault operation here to get fast capping and decapping. It might be the only thing that saves him at this point with the VP drain. The and it us. looks like he's not going to get it in time. So yeah, that's going to be victory for the DAC in this one. All right. So we're going to run through the build order here, starting with Nub. Obviously gets his scouts, then engineers, uh, then a barracks and two rifles. At this point, he selects the special operations battle group and gets the weasel out. Uh, I like this, but it, it just feels late. It's one of my uh, issues with the Special Operations Battle Group is like if you don't get the weasel right away, uh, its utility starts to go away. If you can get it to Vet 1, 
uh, and you get the field medic kit, then it allows you to avoid having to put up a, a medic tent in your headquarters. So that's beneficial. Uh, normally you see it earlier. Um, this is a reaction to kind of the way that uh, Barrow Downs is playing the DAC build, which makes sense. Then you, he goes into grenade tech, gets a third rifle out, which you really need at this point to kind of manage uh, just across the map. Uh, goes mechanized support center. And so you see where his strategy is going here, because then he goes motor pool and greyhound, and then rearm and retrofit for the canister rounds, which he uses fairly well early. The problem is the greyhound eventually kind of gets forced off the map by some of the better DAC uh, anti-vehicle units. Um, starts getting his AT guns out, gets a fourth rifle, upgrades BARs to help them scale against the DAC infantry. And to be fair, it works, right? The rifles do fairly well against the DAC infantry as the game goes on, but it's not the infantry that are, pro that are the problem. Uh, gets two more AT guns out, gets a fifth rifleman. Finally gets his tank depot up. He's floating a little bit of fuel. Uh, and then he builds two Shermans, the standard M4A1. The first one pretty much immediately knocked out, so he replaces it. But at this point in the game, it's just a little bit too late, uh, and he's not able to uh, counter on VPs. Um, so as far as the battle group goes, obviously Weasel, anti-infantry loiter. He elects for the uh, the call-in whizbang. Uh, obviously doesn't bring it in. It's an interesting choice in use of CPs. But at the end of the game, he has plenty of the CPs anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Um, then he goes for the flares, the commandos, which uh, it doesn't really use the commandos in this game. The, the big miss here for me is not unlocking the assault operation. Um, this significantly increases capture and decapture speeds. This is what he needed to potentially stop the VP ble bleed towards the end of the game and give himself another couple of minutes to potentially turn this thing all the way around. All right, and now for Barrow Downs. So it starts with the Panzer Pioneers, gets a Krod Schutzen, gets a Panzer Grenadier Squad, then gets a 250 half track. He throws a flamer on the first squad of Panzer Pioneers and uses that fairly well to force uh, Nub's units out of cover. Gets a second Panzer Grenadier squad. And then from here, he goes into the light support company. So I like this approach. He has enough fuel saved up to get light support company and fire support elements immediately. Um, what he's prioritizing is the initial army composition. Uh, a mistake that one I used to make all the time is teching as early as possible without the right army composition to maintain field presence. You gotta remember when you when you build, when you tech, you're spending that fuel and you're basically giving your opponent a moment to breathe. You have to make sure you have enough units on the field to continue to fight uh, and to buy yourself space to tech. From there he gets a flak for Ling, which he kept uh, alive through the end of the game. Uh, really, really good micro there across the board. Use it to suppress the rifle squads to turn engagements. Uh, just really well done. Uh, then he chooses the armored support battle group. Uh, goes for the assault mechanized group, so the assault engineers and another uh, 250 half track. Then uh, Greyhound hits the field, so he react, reacts with a pack 38. He goes for the penetration upgrade on the armored support battle group. And I think this is just a to allow his flak for Ling to kind of deal with the Greyhound, which which it does when it needs to. Neither one's looking to knock out the other, but at least allow it to, to hold off that Greyhound, uh, keep it at arm's length. Then he gets a second Panzer Pioneer out with a Minesweeper, which makes a lot of sense. I think that's a that's a good TTP for you to use. Uh, two and a half ton med truck uh, because his infantry are starting to take some damage. Veteran squad leaders. Um, at this point, he only has one Panzer Grenadier squad, uh, but it's still useful because it provides a bonus to all the other infantry as well. Uh, Panzer Army Command, the, the tier four, he gets a Panzer three out. And then from here, he invests in a lot of tech. Because he's played so vehicle heavy, he actually has a fair amount of uh, free manpower. He goes for the emergency repair kits first. The self-repair and the ADHP is super useful. Checks the armored reserves. Then from there, he pulls in a Panzer IV assault group. So another squad of assault grenadiers and a P4 with some of the upgrades. Uh, the P3 and a P4 together, really nasty. So good choice. Rapid advance to allow his vehicles to cap. The vehicle survival package for the smoke and another 40 HP. And then at the end of the game, a Tiger to close it out. From a battle group perspective, he goes for the salvage kits, the uh, Panzer Storm, and then the Loiter. And he really saves any tells on his battle group until he pops that first Loiter, which is really critical because it helps him knock out that M4A1. Um, he obviously selected the, the penetration, the veteran gunners, 30% penetration boost early, and then actually doesn't finish out the tree, which realistically he doesn't need to. He could have gone for the, the Panzer III, the flamethrower, to help deal with some of the rifles, but with three AT guns on the field, uh, kind of a waste at that point. So uh, even though he didn't finish this one out, choices make a lot of sense. 
So putting this all together, obviously both players are extremely talented and the back and forth nature of the game kind of lends itself to that. Like this is the kind of Company of Heroes 3 game you want to see. Lots of aggression on either side, the battle going back and forth pretty much constantly. Um, and so I have only have a couple of notes and they're more takeaways or things that uh, guys at you know my level could probably apply. Um, so I want to start with Nub. Uh, he was on the losing side. I thought he did an excellent job staying in the game. Uh, there were a couple losses early, losses, scouts, uh, and just was taking a beating from all the vehicle units on the DAC, uh, especially losing that, that fuel point. So I thought he did a good job in the mid game of starting to apply some pressure, being more judicious and taking good engagements. And in that, starting to regain that map control and apply a lot of pressure and to put Barrow Downs kind of on the back foot there. Um, he had his three AT guns, which he typically kept uh, pretty spread out. I think the benefit of the AT guns against some of these lighter DAC vehicles, you might not always get the kill, but if you, you know, get land a hit or two and you chunk down the vehicles, they can't stay and hang out and fight. So you're essentially, it's like suppression for infantry, right? You're forcing them to back up uh, and winning the engagement. He had some bad luck with uh, salvos where one round would hit the flak filling and one would miss. Um, but other than that, you know, good use of the AT guns. Interesting choice in the M4A1 at the end of the game there. Uh, you know, I wish I could to talk to him about it uh, and figure out what his thought process was. I feel like the M4A1 is really kind of lacking at the moment. Uh, it's a generalist unit. Um, it's a little squishy. It doesn't, because of the unit uh, model cap damage limit, like it really struggles dealing with clumped up infantry or AT guns. Um, it'll do okay against Panzer 3s and Panzer 4s, but can't handle the heavy armor and can get outmassed. Um, so I think for its cost, it just kind of, it, it underperforms. Now, I'm okay with that in concept because it's a generalist, and so you want to reward players that go for like a bulldozer and then a Hellcat to kind of manage the two different fights. But at the same time, I, I just wonder why he went with that. Um, he didn't have the 76 mil upgun yet, and then he replaced it with yet another one. Uh, my thought process was maybe a bulldozer instead, since you had the three AT guns. Uh, so you have the hard counter for vehicles, you've got the hard counter for team weapons and uh, infantry, allow your rifles to spread out a little bit more. But, um, you know, he's ranked 11 or 14 overall with the US, so I'm pretty sure he knows what he's doing. Uh, just really looking for his input there. And then for Barrow Downs, uh, obviously outstanding fuel pressure, um, putting Nub on the back foot. Right, the DAC doesn't necessarily need the fuel as much as the U.S. forces do, but in this case, hurting your opponent is almost worth more uh, than getting the fuel for yourself. I thought he did, did a great job of using all of his vehicles to avoid the AT gun wall and to spread out on the map and maintain control. That kind of micro takes a really high APM and a lot of awareness, but and so I think he did a really good job there. Um, I hit it in the build order. I like getting the second Pioneer out to get the uh, the Minesweeper. Um, I know I have a tendency, if I get a flamethrower on a Pioneer squad early, then I sometimes I'm like, well, I really want a Minesweeper, but it's 200 manpower. It's worth it, right? Especially against a good opponent who's going to throw mines down. Uh, getting that sweeper out is critical. And then one thing I wanted to highlight, and I'll talk about this a little bit more later, the Flak for Ling, keeping it alive and allowing it to get to Vet 3, really helpful in the late game. Um, he saw the weasel, so he knew the anti-infantry loiter was a possibility that he might see it so keeping that alive and in the back it just deletes uh the allied loiters so uh really valuable there uh and good work good micro keeping it uh, alive that long overall this map i i talked about a little bit during the cast i like the way it plays but man it can be tricky to manage the retreat paths to avoid letting your opponent just gun you down as you try to stretch for the the high resource side i think it leads to some interesting play but it's something uh, to be really cognizant of, especially support units that have lower health, like scouts and engineers. Um, I thought this match kind of highlighted the lack of uh, AA balance between allies and Axis right now. Now, in a previous match, I did see a quad 50 cal half track from the US do a fairly good job of knocking down an Axis loiter. Um, not immediately, but it definitely took some time off the clock. The difference, though, is that especially for the DAC, the flak furlings almost always played. Whereas on the USF or the British side, I feel like AA units are a specific decision to counter airplanes. Um, and so that, that just kind of gets into Barrow Downs not giving away that he's using the armored battle group uh, until he pops that first loiter and securing the kill on the uh, on the Sherman. 
you know, uh, if Nub had seen the loiter before or seen another tell that like, oh, this guy's running armored, he can potentially still get a quad 50 out uh, to, to save him from the loiter later on. Um, I will say, though, that with the late, you know, the changes to the half tracks, some of the viability, especially the 75 mil, I don't think there's a reason to shy away from the weapon support center as USF. The 100 manpower, 10 fuel, at the end of the day, it doesn't cost that much and it gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, I've seen more half track play myself uh, in 1v1s and 2v2s. I think it's worthwhile unlocking. So something to think of, especially in team games where loiters become a real problem. And then, uh, yeah. I think that's really it. Both these guys played really well. It's a nice aggressive game. Um, super fun to watch. So uh, thanks to Nub and to Barrow Downs. Thanks for watching and we'll see y'all in the next one.